Yankee Help Help. Oh! The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston and Phil Harris in his orchestra. The orchestra opens the program with High Ho from Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. <laughs> Here's a man who wants us to settle an argument for him. He's Mr. O. Beck of South Perry Street, Chicago. Mr. Beck writes, one person who claims there are two jellos. Another tells me there is only one jello. Which is right? Well, Mr. Beck, that's one argument which is easily settled. There is only one jello. The name jello is a trademark, the property of General Foods. If you hear any other gelatin dessert called jello, you'll know that is incorrect. For there is no other jello. That's why we always urge you to ask for Jell-O by name, whenever and wherever you order it, whether it's from your grocer or in a restaurant. And here's something you want to know. Restaurants serving real Jell-O can now display an autographed picture of Jack Benny. So look for his picture as your assurance that they serve genuine Jell-O. And remember, to enjoy Jell-O's extra rich fruit flavor, Jell-O's delicious true fruit goodness, always insist by name on the one and only Genuine Jello. <laughs> that was High Ho played by the orchestra. Now, ladies and gentlemen. We have a little surprise for you. Jack wired us that owing to a slight delay on the train, he will be just a few minutes late. So in the meantime, while we're waiting for Jack, I'll turn the microphone over to his good friend and pinch hitter, Georgie Jessel. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Hello again. This is George Jessel, the stand-in talking. I want to tell you folks that I'm very happy to be here tonight for two reasons. First, it's an honor and a pleasure to help Jack out, and second, it's a job. Mm. Of course, Don, it's nice to be working with you, too. Well, thank you, Georgie. I think we'll get along just fine. Oh, by the way, Don, does uh, Jack... I mean, he expects to give me something for this, you know? Uh, by that, I mean I hope he won't take advantage of our friendship. Oh, no, Georgie, no. You know, Jack wouldn't do a thing like that. I'm, I'm sure that he will compensate you for your work. Well, I hope it's with money. <laughs> you see, Don, I've already got a Boy Scout knife. You and Fred Allen, huh? But I don't mind playing benefits for the needy, but after all, Jack is not on his way to the pound. You know what I mean, don't you? <laughs> well, Georgie, I think you'll find Jack perfectly fair. I'll be happy if I can find him. Well, how are you, Phil? Glad to see you. Hello, Georgie. Are you substituting here, too? No, I'm on the program every Sunday. Hmm. Say, George, I heard you talking to Don. Are you worried whether or not Jack's going to pay you for tonight? Well, Phil, I'm not exactly worried, but I'd like to do one program where I don't have to write in a pot for my lawyer. <laughs> anyway, Don, what happened to Jack, and why is he late? Well, it seems that Jack's butler, Rochester, got off the train at Albuquerque, and Jack went out to look for him. I see. And the train pulled away without them. Oh, well, any train that would do that, I'll bet it whistles at girls at every crossing. <laughs> But I guess he'll be here pretty soon, you know. He's on a very fast train right now, and I'm sure... Well, Roger, sir, we're rolling right along now. Yeah, Mr. Benny, it's sure is a long trip. I'll say, just think, four whole days on a train. Oh, well, we'll be home pretty soon. I hope so. We're running out of sandwiches. <laughs> Well, we would have been home yesterday if you hadn't got her off at Albuquerque to look at those Indians. I thought I was back in Harlem. <laughs> Harlem, I told you before, all those people at the station were Indians. Indians? Yes. Well, just the same, I saw Pat Poos eating a pork chop. <laughs> well, what of it? He can be an Indian and still eat a pork chop. I know, but he had it between two slices of watermelon. <laughs> all right, you win. But I want to tell you something, Rochester. It's the last time I'm going to take you to New York. You're supposed to help me. The only time I saw you is when you needed money. Well, you spent more than I did. That ain't no record. 
Never mind that. And another thing, you lied to me. You told me you needed the money for a new suit. Now, where is it? The suit? Yes, yeah, the suit. You mean the one I had my heart set on? Yeah, where is that new suit I gave you the money for? Well, I'll tell you, boss. Hmm. I was on my way to the store and got mixed up in a game of African badminton. <laughs> Oh, so you lost your suit in a crab game, huh? Yes, sir. I rolled myself right out of the Easter parade. <laughs> oh, you did, huh? Well, it's a good thing we're going home. Say, Mr. Benny, who's taking your place on the program tonight? A fellow named Georgie Jessel. He's a great pal of mine. Dude. Georgie Jessel? Yeah. You know, I've never seen him. What does he look like? Well, I'd say that Jessel was medium height, nice personality. And looks something like an anteater. <laughs> Although I doubt if he does. <laughs> Say, is there a radio in this observation car? There's one right over there by that lady. Oh, fine. Uh, pardon me, madam. Do you mind if I tune in the radio? No, not at all. Go right ahead. Thanks. I'm very anxious to hear the Jack Benny program. You're just the type. <laughs> well, there's a fan for you. Hey, Rochester, tune in NBC. It's around 65 on the dial there. Yes, sir. So therefore, ladies and gentlemen, insist on genuine Jello as it is America's leading dessert. That's it, Roger. That's Wilson, all right. And it comes in six delicious flavors: strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, and lime. That was very good, Don. What you said was not only thrilling but educational. Uh oh, we got the wrong program. Quiet, it's Mr. Jasper. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, Don, how am I doing so far? Am I handling the program all right? Well, to tell you the truth now, Georgie, and please don't repeat this to Jack. Oh, you can trust me. Well, I think you've given this program new life. Frankly, you're much more amusing than Jack. Hey, kid, Georgie, you're dynamite. You didn't even ask, Phil. <laughs> Say, uh, Georgie, you've known Jack for quite a little while, haven't you? Yes, Jack and I have been in show business about the same length of time. As a matter of fact, we started out in the very same theater. Oh, the same theater, eh? Mm -hmm. And even in those days, Jack was a real showman. He wouldn't sell one single peanut during my act. That's a lie. It was popcorn. <laughs> but anyway, Don, I must admit that Jack has made marvelous strides. He won some peanuts to Jello in six delicious years. Oh, say, Don, where's Mary? Here I am. Hello, Georgie. There's Mary. He doesn't <laughs> sound natural. <laughs> well, Mary, I guess you're anxious for Jack to get back. It'll seem strange working with me. No, I like to work with you, Georgie. You want to know something? Now, don't repeat this to Jack, will you? Oh, you can trust me. Well, believe me, it gets pretty tiresome week after week looking at that blank face of his. <laughs> Looks like a bowl of mush. <laughs> mm, mush yet. <laughs> well, Mary, after all, I'm not so much to look at myself. I've never been taken for Myrna Loy. Of course, she's much taller than I am. <laughs> but at least you're different than Jack. You smile and laugh once in a while. Jack never laughs. Well, my teeth don't slip out. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Now, Rochester, my teeth don't slip out. No, sir, you hold them in better than anybody. <laughs> Get away from me, will you? I want to hear this. Say, Mary, I'd like to ask you something, and believe me, you're the first one I've mentioned this to. What do you think Jack's going to give me for taking his place tonight? Oh, he'll take care of you. First, he'll tell you how wonderful it was for you to come up here, and then he'll give you a great big pat on the back. Oh, you mean the same as I get every place else? <laughs> but, Mary, Jack isn't that tight. He isn't, eh? Listen, Georgie. Jack has been in New York a week, and I'll bet he's still got California air in his pocketbook. <laughs> well, surely he'd open it up to let the moth see Radio City, wouldn't he? <laughs> Rochester. <laughs> he ain't no good at all. <laughs> Gee, I wish this train would get in. Come here, George. You want me to tell you something? What is it? You remember that birthday party Jack gave for himself about a month ago, and he invited a big crowd? Yes, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> What are you laughing at? Well, between the first two courses, he ran out and had all the presents appraised. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then what happened? Well, Jack mad. He only broke even on the dinner. <laughs> mm, the little traitor. That's your tearing you down, boy. And then to think I bought them all gifts. And Mary's I can't wear. <laughs> oh, you can fold it up and use it for silk handkerchief. <laughs> Rochester. Well, Mary... You've given me a vivid picture of what I'll have to go through when Jack gets here. Georgie, by the time you get your money out of Jack, you'll be so bent over, you'll have to endorse a check on the floor. Hmm. Oh, well, play, Phil. With my luck, not only I won't get paid, but when I leave the studio, I'll probably tear my pants. Go ahead, Phil. <laughs> Say, 
Hey, that music sounds like Harris, all right. Huh? Yes, sir. Los Angeles, Los Angeles, all out. Last one off the train to Old Tomato. <laughs> Here we are, Rochester. Come on, grab those bags, and I'll see you at the house later. I'm going to rush over to the studio. Okay, through the ride, played by Phil Harris and his orchestra, and I must say, Phil, after hearing the boys, I'm surprised at the way that Jack stands up here every week and keeps running down your music. He shouldn't do that. Well, of course he shouldn't. My music is all right. No, it's pretty bad, but Jack shouldn't mention it. <laughs> of course, I tell you, Phil, the way I feel about all this... Now, wait a minute, Georgie, wait a minute. Here comes Kenny Baker. Do you know him? Well, no, not personally. You like him, Georgie. He's a great kid. He thinks Tracy Allen should be president. Mm. Quiet. My wife thinks he is. But <laughs> my wife thinks he is. It says here. Anyway, <laughs> wife thinks he. Anyway, you leave. Li- oh, you leave Kenny to me. I'll handle him all right. I bet you Dolly drives you nuts. All right, it's a bet. It's a bet. Here comes, here comes, Georgie. Oh yeah. Hello, hello, Kenny. Hello, Jack. Did you have a nice trip? <laughs> Nice trip. What is this? <laughs> hey, Don, didn't Jack go to New York? Wait a minute, Kenny. It's Jessel. Jessel. Where's that? <laughs> well, I've lost at least 35 cents already. Now, listen, Kenny. I'm just taking Jack's place till he gets here. My name is Jessel. Oh, yes. Well, see, whiz, I didn't recognize you there for a minute. No, Jiminy Crickets. I thought you didn't. <laughs> well, you know me now, don't you? Sure. Hey, didn't I see you in a picture the other day with Betty Davis? What picture? Jessel Bell. <laughs> Jessel Bell? Look, Penny, the name of the picture is Jezebel. It wasn't me. I don't make pictures. And here's your dollar Mary. Thanks. <laughs> hey, what's going on? Nothing, Kenny. I just bet Mary a dollar that you couldn't drive me nuts. Ah, gee, you're a sucker. <laughs> Folks, this entire event looks good for a loss to me, I'll tell you that. Hello, fellas, here I am! Well, well, it's your, it's your good to be back. I'm certainly glad to see you, Jack. Me, Believe me. Me too. I really miss you, old pal. So did I, Jack. Boy, am I glad to see you. Oh, yes, of course, certainly. I'm tight, except for my teeth, which flip out. And I got a face like a bowl of mush. Doesn't have to be in a bowl. <laughs> well, there was a radio on the train. I heard every word you fellas said. Was fine loyally talking behind my back. Well, I didn't say anything against you, Jack. I know you didn't, Kenny. I just got here. <laughs> I know that, too. Well, hello, Georgie. How do you like it here? I'll know in a little while. <laughs> well, I appreciate your coming over and helping me out tonight, Georgie. It was a great display of friendship. Here it comes, folks. Now, look, Jack, patting on the back, that's for children. You know that. <laughs> We're very good friends, but this is my business, the same as yours. I understand that. Now, uh, look, Georgie. Look, nothing. You wired me to come over here, and I did, and I expect to get paid. Well, all right, all right. Gee, you'd think I was a chiseler or a tightwad or something. Up to something, you were pretty hot. (laughs) Well, 
I, I just don't want to be robbed, that's all. Robbed? Why, I left my own birthday party to come here, cake and all. Strangers had to blow out my own candle. Well, calm down, Georgie. Look, I'll give you a check for whatever you think your time is worth. Now you're talking friendship. <laughs> all right, what do you want? Well, Jack, I don't want too little or too much. In other words, I don't want a cigar or an annuity. <laughs> now, don't beat around the bush. How much do you want? I'll this? take $500. If you want to give me 10% extra for my birthday, that's up to you. <laughs> up to me? If it's up to Jack, it's back to you, Georgie. Well, all right, George, let's not haggle about it. I'll write you out a check. Well, that's okay with me. I got my checkbook right here. Now, let's see, uh, April 3rd. Gee, look at his handshake. Mary. <laughs> April 3rd, 19... Now, the amount... Now, wait a minute, Jack. It's 1938, not 40. All right, so I made a mistake. <laughs> I'm not in Palafaville. <laughs> now, just a second. Uh... <laughs> Let's see, now, just a second. Pay to the order of... Say, how do you want this made out? George Jessel or Georgie Jessel? Just put down man, $500. All right. <laughs> Sounds like Jessel, all right. Here's your... Here's your check. Well, uh, thanks, Jack. Now, it's really been a pleasure. Oh. And if you ever need me again, don't fail to call on me. Oh, I will, I will. By the way, Georgie, where can I get in touch with you? Uh, what's your phone number? Just ask for Aunt Ada, you mush face. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> Well, that's the last time I'll ever ask him to help me out with anything. Gee whiz, Jack, you don't expect Georgie to come over here and work for nothing, do you? Well, why not? He's a friend of mine. Well, would you work on his program for nothing? I'm talking to Miss Livingston. <laughs> well, would you? That's Phil's question. Think of your own. Oh, well, I've got one. Shut up. <laughs> so, I got one. Well, let me tell you something. Last week in New York, Fred Allen, Kate Smith, Ripley, Lyman, and Von Zell all appeared on my program for nothing. No wonder you told them it was for the Red Cross. Well, <laughs> didn't make any difference. Say, Jack, tell uh, us all about your trip to New York. Did you have any fun? Well, I'll tell you about it later. Wait till I get settled here. Uh, Kenny, are you ready for your song? All set, Jack. Go ahead. Uh, wait a minute. Come in. Mr. Benny? Yes? Here I am, bouncing in again. <laughs> well, for... For heaven's sake, who are you? The check you just gave Jessel. Well, goodbye. <laughs> I can't understand that. The banks are closed today. Sing, Kenny. Here to meet an end, but it's merely an illusion. Like your heart and mine, there is no sweet conclusion. I can see no matter how near you. I can dream, can't I? Can't I pretend that I'm locked in the bend of your embrace? For dreams are just like wine, and I am drunk with mine. I'm aware my heart is a sad affair. There's much disillusion there But I can dream, can't I, can't I
was Can't I from Right This Way, sung by Kenny Baker. Right back on the job again and in the same old form. Say, Kenny, uh, did you listen to me last Sunday when I was in New York? Well, I wanted to, Jack. I, I ran over to my girl's house to hear it, but her father doesn't like you. <laughs> no, he doesn't, eh? And why didn't you and your girl go out in your car and listen to the program? She doesn't like you either. Well, that's great loyalty. Why don't you find a girl that likes me? I did, and she was slap happy. <laughs> Gee. Well, gee whiz, I, I'd like to know how the... I'd like to know how the program came over last Sunday. Did you hear it, Mary? Well, I invited a big crowd over to the house that night. You know how it is. Some wanted to dance and some wanted to listen to you, so we took a boat. Oh, how did it come out? The big apple won by a landslide. <laughs> That's fine. You were the hostess. Why didn't you put your foot down? I did. Oh. I said, this is my party. You can either listen to Jack's program or go home. Well, that's great. What, what else did you say? Nothing. I was alone. <laughs> so I went to bed. Well, as long as you were left alone, you could have listened to me. Why all this hurry about getting to sleep? I'm having a continued dream about Clark Gable. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and I didn't want to miss chapter 12. Yeah. <laughs> Some excitement. <laughs> well, that's a, that's a very feeble excuse. Hey, did you hear the program, Don? Well, uh, to tell you the truth, Well, never Jack, mind, I... never mind. Uh, all I can say is I'm certainly proud of my associates. Not one of you listened to me. Now, wait a minute, Jack. Don't be so hasty. I heard the program from beginning to end. It was great. Thanks, Bill. Say, how did you like that routine I did with... <laughs> You double-crosser, you didn't hear the program. I did, too. Well, how could you hear Whiteman when he wasn't there? I could have been drunk, you know. <laughs> Go on. You were... <laughs> Go on. You, were, you were nowhere near a radio last Sunday. I was, too, and I had to heard every word you said. <laughs> Why, Phil, you're nothing but a great big liar. You got something there. <laughs> mm, what a gang. To think that not one of you could devote a half hour to me. Come in. Well, look who's here. Hiya, Buck. Hello, friends. <laughs> well, if it ain't Huckleberry Finn and Tom Sawyer. <laughs> Well, to what do I owe this double feature? Happy welcome to you. Happy welcome to you. Happy welcome, Jack Benny. Happy welcome to you. I got the blues. <laughs> well, now, that's what I call a real greeting. Say, Andy. Andy, how come you and Schlepp uh, came up here together tonight? Well, I'll tell you, Buck, Schlepp and I are neighbors now. While you were away, I sold him part of my ranch. Oh, you did? <laughs> well, that's a surprise to me. So you're a farmer now, eh, Schlepp? Yeah, that's me, my cracky Zeke Schlepperman. <laughs> well, Schlepp, I can't picture you behind a plow. Uh, what do you keep on your ranch? Oh, I got everything. Sheep, cows, dogs, gooses. <laughs> gooses? Huh? Yeah, you know, a seagoing chicken. <laughs> And you bought the land and all the livestock from Andy, huh? Yes, sir, Buck, and I gave him a square deal. Yeah, a square deal, he calls it. Three times already he sold me the same homing pigeons. <laughs> no kidding. Did you do that, Andy? <laughs> yeah. Well, you ought to be ashamed of yourself selling pigeons that, to schlep that fly right back to you. I only sell them, Buck. I can't change their habits. <laughs> Well, uh, tell me, Schlepp, uh, what did he charge you for them? You mean for each pigeon? Yes. A dollar and a half a round trip. <laughs> well, that's fair enough. Huh? But I'll tell you one thing, Buck. I gave him a real bargain on a cow. Oh, he sold you a cow, too, eh, Schlepp? Yeah, a fine bargain. Only one faucet works. <laughs> Maybe your technic cue isn't right. Huh? But look, Andy, what's the idea of selling so much stuff to Schlepperman there? Well, I'll tell you, Buck. Pa had to have some ready cash. He's going to buy an aeroplane. 
Oh, your pa wants to be an aviator. Has he ever been up in the air before? Well, just once when our goat caught him unaware. <laughs> so your goat made an aviator out of him. What does your ma think of the idea, Andy? She says, let him go. He's always been higher than a kite anyhow. <laughs> Well, I wish him a lot of luck. Huh? <laughs> well, Buck, guess we'll be running along now. Just dropped in to welcome you back home. Goodbye, Jackie boy. Come out to my ranch sometime. Thanks, I'll do that. Uh, what's the name of your place? Schlepperman's Hacienda. <laughs> Suits, cloaks, and fresh eggs. Fine, I'll be there. So long, boys. Oh, say, Buck, I forgot to ask you. Did you have a nice time in New York? Oh, swell, Andy. It was great. Oh, that's good. Well, come on, Zeke. Okay, partner. I'm home on the range where the deer and the cantaloupe play. <laughs> Well, well, so Schlepperman is a neighbor of Andy's now. Gee, it won't be long before Andy's talking with a dialect. Huh? Any change will be good. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, fellas, the program's nearly over. I think I'll call it a day. I'm so tired after that long train ride. Guess I'll run along home. I don't blame you, Jack. Go get some rest. That's just what I need. Gee, it'll be good to see the house again. You know, I don't care where you travel, fellas. There's nothing like home sweet home. Well, so long, fellas. Goodbye, Goodbye Jack. Goodbye, Have Jack. a good sleep. Take a rest. Uh, wait a minute. There's the phone. I'll take it. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny. You coming home pretty soon? Yes, Rochester. Why? Is there anything wrong? Well, boss, I think we had visitors while we was away. Visitors? Yeah, all the dresser drawers are mussed up. Well, the mice could have done that. They must have been big ones. The grand piano's missing. <laughs> the grand piano? Why, we've had burglars. It could have been the finance company. Now, that's ridiculous. What else is missing? You know that great big picture of you that hangs in the North Hall? Which one? The one where you're wearing evening clothes. Yeah, yeah, what about it? You're in DVDs now. <laughs> oh, well, I don't care. Everything is insured. I'll be right home, Rochester. I'm tired. I want to get some sleep. You better hurry. They're carrying the bed out now. <laughs> well, stop him, stop him. Play, Phil. Police! Police! They like it in Kansas, they like it in Maine, they like it in Alberta, Canada. It's Jell-O chocolate pudding, and you like it too. From Wichita, Kansas, Mrs. Robert Goskins writes, I've tried nearly all the prepared puddings on the market, and they never tasted quite right, but Jell-O chocolate pudding is perfect. Miss Vivian Hunter of Portland, Maine says, I've tried for a long time to find a prepared chocolate pudding that had a really good flavor, but each time was disappointed. Then I tried Jell-O chocolate pudding, and I was pleased as a child at Christmas time. And up from Alberta, Canada, Mrs. Vincent Pickering writes, Jell-O chocolate pudding makes a dessert fit for a king. And the reason everybody agrees that Jell-O chocolate pudding is so good is because it's made from the same fine, wholesome ingredients you'd use yourself. It has a rich, chocolatey, homemade goodness, smooth and tempting. Yet it takes almost no time to prepare. The simple directions are in every package, along with several variations. Jell-O chocolate pudding is inexpensive, easy, and delicious. Order some from your grocer tomorrow. This is the last number of the 27th program in the new Jell-O series, and we'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. I want to thank Georgie Jessel for helping me out this evening and wish him good luck on his personal appearance in Detroit next week. Say, Jack. What? Did you hear Fred Allen's program Wednesday night? No, but whatever he said, I didn't do it the idea of accusing me of stealing everything out of the Waldorf Astoria. I thought you didn't hear him. Well, I say, if you, I mean, I could... Oh, good night, folks. J-E-L-L-O! Kenny Baker appears on the Jell-O program through courtesy of Mervyn Leroy Productions. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs>